Hello there and welcome back to Ears to the East. Now, we're using a new platform to record. We're using Zoom now because we had so many sound problems on Discord, which you've probably heard in the past. Um, but uh, I'm hoping, therefore, this recording will all be perfect. But we did a sound check and it looks good, Neon. It looks like people will be able to hear you as loud as me. So prove it, Neon. <laughs> to the people uh, and that's not a good thing but that was probably why we got so many subscribers already because they couldn't hear me as loud oh, the beauty of your voice pierced through my poor weak heart so dangerous so my, my dangerous voice is killed many a man <laughs> <laughs> oh it's like the sirens call after having to listen to so many awful bands as i occasionally do because some people like to make me suffer however we're not here to talk about awful bands we're here to talk about good bands um primarily actually an interesting one. I, I i actually don't know i haven't seen if you've put out your reaction yet but obviously uh, I, I haven't no i haven't uploaded it yet but i have done it I'm going to be interested in your opinion. Uh, my video got rather actually going up today. interesting <laughs> opinions. And this is about the new Hannah Beer song, Toso, which means run away. Um, now, I, I, I'm guessing probably half the people who are watching this maybe have seen my review or not. So I'm not going to try not to spend too much time waffling about what I've said before, but I might have to explain it to you. What I'm going to do to first of all start off is I want to get your opinion on Toso. What did you think about this new Hannah Beer song? Um, what was your take? Um, I loved it. <laughs> I really did. Um, I wish I my, my thing with Hannah Beer sometimes is like um, obviously. It, it, I, okay, let, let's just start from the beginning. Like I personally like metal. I really, really like the growls, and I particularly like the song that they leaned like pretty much all into that a little bit more than they usually do. So for me, I was like, oh hell yeah, I, I like I like this. <laughs> I like I like this a lot. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they just really, really sold it. They they really, for me, kind of came out the end of this looking like proper badasses. And I was like, you know, respect, Hannah Beer, respect. <laughs> well, this kind of takes me on to where I see this conversation going. Because it's a bigger <laughs> issue that I really wanted to discuss with us. Because I think Neon knows what my opinion probably will be on this. But um, the way I've uh, uh, positioned my video as a recap for anyone who hasn't seen it and as a summary for people who have is that I kind of said, well, look, I'm a Hannah Beer fan. I consider myself a Hannah Beer fan. I love a lot of their songs. However, I also accept that I'm somewhat outside of their target demographic because, you know, when it comes to the growl stuff, again, some people are like, oh, you don't like the growling in Hannah Beer. You just don't like metal. It's like, no, no, actually, I like growling stuff in some songs, but as a general, I like it in less than I dislike it in. Um, it's like, I like it as context. I like it to add a bit of emotion to pop in between other vocals when it's just its thing on its own. It's like, it doesn't really do anything for me. Um, but I don't really want to talk so much about just the growling side today. The reason I wanted to bring this up is because I got some really interesting comments, um, on my video. Now I basically said, look, I think this is a good song. It's not really for me because the verses, I find the verses a bit boring because it's just growling and it just doesn't feel like it goes anywhere. It doesn't feel like there's anything going on. Um, then the choruses, you know, Matsuri really pulls off a good performance in there. Um, but as a general, this doesn't have all the genre hopping that usually makes Hannah Beer so exciting for me. Um, it just kind of has very straight rocky. If anything, it feels more like a Nemophila song, excuse the by proxy reference there. You know, um, so as a result, that's kind of where I feel for it. But a lot of the comments, um, we got comments that were between some people were like, yeah, I agree with you. Some people were like, oh, I understand your opinion. But there were quite a few comments which I think were going down the vibe of, well, if you don't like growling, don't listen to metal. And I found that rather interesting. Now, again, I'm not positioning these people as like, I, I, this is these people giving their genuine opinion. But I think there is this interesting thing where, some people, um, and obviously if you're saying, oh, growling's all shit, then yeah, just don't listen to it. But I think there is this interesting thing where some people are like, hey, if you just don't like this, then you shouldn't listen to this style. But I would say it's possible to listen to a genre knowing that you're not the target audience. It's not always your kind of thing and liking it. I know some people who hate most rap, but then they listen to some rap and they really actually just go, oh, that rap song I really like. No, I'm not really sure why, but that one just clicks for me. And you, I say, killed like, my, you killed my example there. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, yeah, so I'm okay, working maybe, in my head. I'm like, <laughs> maybe I would talk because I mean, I, I've been, I've been sort of like, I've stuck up for like some genres before, you know, like punk and rap, where I can totally understand people's criticisms. 
but I, I I feel more like I want people who don't like it to listen to it. And even if they go, oh, I really like that one. And I think you like that one. Still, I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm kind of curious whether you've got any sort of feeling on this or whether you feel that's the sort of thing. Yeah, what's your feeling about that kind of whole um, area, you know? Uh, well, like I said, I'll touch on to the first bit that I said. I, I totally okay. agree with you. Well, I was I was literally going to use the exact same um, scenario where, like, I would say that rap is probably my least favorite genre. But even I like to stick on a bit of, like, you know, uh, Eminem or a bit of NF or whatever like that, you know. And there's just some artists, even though I don't particularly like the genre, that I'm like, hey, I, li I like this. Mm. Um so you can get that. So I don't believe that just because you say, oh, you don't like rap, you can't listen to this person. I, I, no, I, I, I don't agree with that. Or if you turn around and say, hey, you don't like metal, don't, if you don't like growls, don't listen to, don't listen to this as well, because I, I don't agree with that assessment either. I feel like I feel like if you say that, you're very narrow-minded because music is so varied and so drastically different for every artist that you'll, you will eventually find something that you like, that you even with the growls in it, and you're like, oh, I quite like this. Even though I don't like growls, I quite like this. Or even if I don't like hip hop or whatever, I quite like this, you know? Um, you know, I can't stand S Club 7, but, you know, the missus puts it on, and, and I, I'm still I'm still in the background like that, and I'm like, fuck, why am I dancing to this kid? You know? It happens. It happens, you know? And I'm like, I, you know, I have to go, like, into the cupboard. Game! Game, Leon. Um, you know, it happens. It, 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 it's, it's one of those things. It's human nature. You can't dictate everything I, I that you might. I would say this. My, this my, also... my, sorry, sorry. So, yeah, my second, sorry, my second thing I want to lead on to before I forget is that I think sometimes me and you, um, or in particular anybody, I feel I feel like we could be a little bit too over, um, like, analyzing songs a little bit too much. Um and I feel like, you know, if they just want to release a song, which is just pure fast paced um, and growling and get that out of their system, then I, then I don't see why well, not. They, uh, they... I, I, I have heard this argument uh, uh, quite a few times. And I, I would, I, I, if, I, if I may, I just want to sort of rebuke that slightly straight away, because like I said, I've been hearing this argument for many years. I mean, the funniest one, when I hear that in comments, I always think, why the fuck are you watching a review if you don't like hearing people talk about their opinions on music? But anyway, <laughs> um, but the, the funny thing is, though, is that I, I do kind of get that. And the comment, that this comment even came up today, was if you don't like it, don't listen to it, which I, I totally mm -hmm. get. But, um, and this will probably lead me on to replying to the first part of your comment, in that I think that when it comes to this kind of thing, um, yeah, I you know, I think it's important to over and well, not over, but analyze music to find out why we like it. But when you analyze it, it shouldn't be from a position of superiority. I always say the two things I always say, first of all, you know, music is all subjective. You can have as much experience as you want. You could be an expert musician or you could be someone who just listens to a couple of songs in the car on the way to work. Your opinion is just as valid because you're still the consumer. You're still the end consumer. You might have more insight, but it's interesting to discuss these things because when we discuss these things we get to find out why we like what you like and therefore if you hear something which is stripped back doesn't have any clever techniques in but it's still awesome you need to be able to express why i mean you mentioned about s club seven it is true if you listen to an s club seven song it can get stuck in your head and in a kind of a fun way and you might basically hate yourself at that point but <laughs> if you if you cannot express why that song is entertaining without just disrespecting it and talking down to it I don't think you're a real music reviewer. I'm sorry, but if you can sort of like listen to something, if you can listen to Smash Mouth by All Star, and you can, we can all talk about the nonsense lyrics. We can all talk about all of the weird things that are problems with that song. But if you cannot acknowledge why it's catchy, and we can all talk about the fact that the lead singer is a dickhead, but if you cannot acknowledge why that song had appeal, then how are you a song re reviewer? Because clearly it had appeal. So, you know, clearly someone liked it. So if you can't understand that, and this is kind of, I think that's important, but the reason I wanted to drag this back, sorry, go around to your original point, sorry, I know I'm waffling a bit here, but the point I kind of wanted to make is when we talk about that sort of thing of appreciating what's in music, um, it really comes back to the fact that different genres have a mixture of different things in them. So for example, when this person said in the comment, and they made what at first looked like a good comment, is if you don't like growling, why are you listening to metal? But yeah. my initial thought was, well, okay, I know a lot of metal that doesn't have any growling in. 
And by the same point, I know stuff that I wouldn't regard as metal that does have growling in, like Nemophila. And it's like, but then again, also, is there really that clear a line between rock and metal? I mean, th there might be some extremes, but all of these genres are kind of blurred to a certain degree as well, especially with groups like Hannah Beer, who have a strong punk undertone. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the problem is, is that we're so used to saying, well, I'm a metal person. I'm this, I'm that. We're talking about um, gastric spin the other day. And I mentioned about how I like the rap style. And someone said, is that actually rap? And I was like, well, I mean, a hardcore <laughs> rap fan could say, no, it's not. But I think there's a legitimate case to say it is. So um, I think that's the problem is I just don't think it, the genres are clearly as defined as people would like them to be. I gave you a lot to reply to there. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, I think, you, like I said, I think you hit the nail on the head in a, in a fair few things there. You didn't really, leave, you didn't Somewhere really, yeah, that. yeah, you didn't really give me a lot, <laughs> a lot to argue there because I, I feel like a vast majority of that I pretty much agree with. I think I, again, I feel like a lot of this is pure, is purely subjective as well. I, I think not only from the eyes but for the listen, for the listener as well. Uh, I mean, for the consumer, everybody's everybody's different. Some people like growl, some people don't. Um, you could the, the reason why I like Japanese music so much for me personally is because like you just said the blur the lines between punk rock metal, metal it's the only culture of music probably in the world right now which are infusing all these different genres to make something new which is why I'm so head over heels over it so mm. it, it is you know it is a bit snobby to turn around and say hey don't like growls don't listen to it because but there's nothing that at the minute right now, there's nothing else quite like these bands anywhere else in the world. It's either Japan or you're fucked. Okay, so if, <laughs> if I play devil's advocate for a minute and present maybe a slightly a different way of looking at it. So if I was to look at what that person was saying, um, admittedly, if you if you don't like those opinions, you don't have to click on the video. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think the legitimate point they might actually be making here, and it was more than one personal fairness, is okay, we like this music, we like this, we like to hear these growls, this is what we like. And it's like, so hearing you as a tourist in our genre coming in and talking about how you don't like it, I can kind of see that. I can kind of see them saying, well, look, you know, maybe this just isn't for you. Um, but I think maybe uh, my counter to that is the fact that, okay, well, I came here because I actually like everything else about the band. You know, I like the punky vibe. I like their mixture of um, different rhythms. I, I like everything else about the band. So I'm on board with all but one thing. Do you, I mean, do you find, are there any bands where you like everything, but there's just maybe one thing that you don't particularly like, but you like the band overall anyway, just maybe there's one thing they do that you're not big into or? I, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that I would turn around and say, hey, I don't really particularly like this band. Hmm. There's de there's definitely a case I would say that even some of my most favorite bands in the, in the whole world have a few songs that I'm like yeah, that's good. Let me just put that in the corner and never listen to that again. Uh, moving, you know, moving on. Like you know, they they do. They, bands do that. They go and stray out of their um, usual gimmick, I suppose, their usual sound, and they try new different things. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, and I, th I think the other thing we're overlooking as well is bands mature over time and their sound changes and um, mm. you, you don't know exactly what Hannah B is kind of aiming for or maybe it's a studio thing more than their taste as well that's 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 a whole other debate um, but well, we, we did we did address because uh, we, we talked about this in a video that we did last week but that video because sound problems I don't think that's going to come out so I'm just going to quickly bring this up uh, we had a discussion where we actually touched on a subject that I think that a lot of these bands who are finding audiences overseas, as a general, the audiences they're finding overseas tend to be more heavy fans. Because in Japan, like pop music, all the music has a lot of complexity and nuance to it. Whereas then when you go to um, the West, a lot of the time, if you want complex music, it's usually heavier and pop tends to be rather simple and minimalistic yeah it doesn't tend to have quite as much writing potential as rock so i think the people out in the west looking for good music tend to be more heavy leaning so mm. a japanese band they connect with western fans they're like oh wow we've broken out and what are they being asked for heavy 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 so i get the feeling that uh, i mean i don't know these these bands probably are just totally into what they're doing but i think they're also is a little bit of you know they put out heavier stuff they put out the more people go yeah and they're like oh 
okay, let's lean into this. Yeah, um, I, I know. I agree. I, I told you the story, didn't I? About uh, I bumped into somebody like uh, like Tana Beer. We were we were talking about it. So that was like the first time I've ever like yeah. come across somebody and we're like, hey, yeah, I kind of be. And I was like, really? I was like, wow. Oh. Um, Fucking yes. Yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> So I, I, I was like, I was like holding onto his arm, like you are now my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and he was looking at me, like, and he was looking at everybody else, like, help. How's that um, restraining order going? Huh? <laughs> sorry, it's not gone through yet. So <laughs> we got a little bit of time together. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, like you said, he, like he was a metalhead, so kind of. Kind of touching on that like i do yeah i i feel like again valid point that i do feel like it's the heavier i think it's easier in that in that community in community in the metal community to get noticed a little bit more than it would be if you were slightly popular maybe from japan and and tried to resonate with a, a like a like a western pop audience i feel like that's a lot harder to do yeah 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 i i, I think that's i think that's actually quite true i mean you you look at um you look at Hannah Beer and um, I I mean, well, you look at Babe Metal and obviously Babe Metal, they came across and they broke into popular consciousness by having a juxtaposition of J-pop and metal. But they managed to achieve longevity by leaning into the metal because mm. metal is the thing that would be taken more seriously. Whereas you can have a, a serious career with like um, grown up fans in the West by in, in the East by doing pop, not so much with uh, metal. But yeah, I, so I, I hope that Hannah Beer bringing this back round. I hope that Hannah Beer, um, because most people who clicked on this clicked on it because they saw Hannah Beer on the thumbnail. Yeah, so yeah. That's this good is what time. we do. We responded to you guys saying that you wanted us to go off on more tangents. So tangents we did. Um, but I... <laughs> Hail I to the wall! That, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that Hannah Beer, um, as long as they're happy, that's all that matters. Um, and if they are reciprocating heavier fans, I get that. Just for me, um, I will be listening to them even when the screen sometimes the screamer stuff works for me, like with pardon me, it does. I'll be listening to them either way because I enjoy 90% of what they do, even if there's 10% where I go, oh, I don't know if I'd necessarily like it that way. I can yeah. still enjoy enough of it that it's good music to me, and I just kind of respect it. So um yeah, yeah. I think if if uh, people for, for like, in... yeah, sorry, like I said, from my side of being personally more metal, when I heard it, I was like, hell yeah, I'm, I'm all for this. <laughs> so no matter which way you look at it, they might lose the 10% or maybe, like I said, of people that like your style of kind of music. God, that sounded so mean. It you really did. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. Well, yeah, I know. I was like, I said that. Was people like, like you. Yeah, people oh. like you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. um, and like, obviously... <laughs> You know, the more people like myself, the, the higher class citizen. Oh. Um, <laughs> no, the higher class citizen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the more people who like it. Brutal. <laughs> I know there, there were so many people, like people were like writing, oh, Hannah Beer is so wonderful. I saw them live and they were absolutely fucking brutal. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the mixture of adjectives in with Hannah Beer fans, it's like, Jesus Christ, I feel like I I'm on a roller coaster just reading. <laughs> So, <laughs> hello, we had a beer. We are so brutal. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you could just see like parents, like, well, I didn't see that coming. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I guess from from my personal point of view, I was I was a bit shocked uh, to be honest. Um, but in all in all the right ways, I was like, hell yeah, I could I could see more of this. The, the question I'm going to ask myself is. Are we going to see more of this? I person, I don't think we will. I think that they definitely will be. They will revert back to like sort sort of their more kind of more toned genre down mash. stuff. Yeah, like genre genre mash and punky rock stuff. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'd say it's toned down. I just think the sort of you know the the songs that have more to them. In all fairness, I mean, I suspect they've recorded an album. It's got loads of different songs. They were like, "What do we want to put out first? Let's put out the song that just." pure on rages because people are gonna fucking love it and plus it gave them the opportunity to do that fantastic video which just showed their personalities showed the sort of wacky crazy personalities yeah i think it was a good choice i think it was a good choice in, um, in, so in all fairness like like if, if you're a producer and you're smart and you're making like a 10 track album or something like that just make two of those songs like really really heavy and then just have the rest what they normally do i, I feel like that's a good middle ground to a yeah, to appease on, a lot of people. They're on Sony now, so God knows if they're going to get any good. 
coverage but um yeah the um i hope that goes well for them sony have a bit of a checkered pass but that's more for another video um so yeah i i think that it's true i mean as if you're the executive producer on an album you, and even the producer as well you need to be sort of saying well look let's have a couple of songs that are really heavy but also a couple of songs that are kind of not you know don't have the heaviness in them it's like let's have a couple you go the other way so um we'll see how that goes but i tell you what let's um let's uh call this one up for now we've got plenty more things to talk about more videos to record and uh yeah don't forget to hit like and subscribe and always keep your ears to the ears <laughs> so I we actually what... pointed the same way as I know. <laughs> it was incredible i'm uh, happy with that. that that deserves a sub if you're not sub sub now <laughs> sub for that sub for more pointing sub for more pointing more